Hi everyone and welcome to Sweet Stitches Quilt Shop. I'm Joan and today is First Friday Demonstration Day here at the shop. Today our theme will be uh, Home Tweet Home and I came up with that one because I'm combining homes and birds and um, all kinds of fun things like that. So the first quilt I'm going to start with today is called uh, Free as a Bird and it's by Abby Lane Quilts. And it's a very cute uh, quilt top, actually pretty large too, a nice um, twin size. It has birdhouses and then birds on um, vines um, with some leaves, uh, a little bit of applique, a little bit of piecing. Those are my favorite types of quilts because I do enjoy applique um, and I enjoy a little bit of piecing too. And this one was fairly easy to put together, especially the birdhouses. So for the first part of it, the birdhouse kind of goes together almost like a log cabin. You're building the different sides as you go around. The only difference is the roof that you see on the top of the birdhouse is made with a template. And so back in the day, that's how all quilts were made. Back before rotary cutters, you had a template, you drew around it, you cut your piece out with scissors and you sewed it together. It's a little bit easier now to use a template because we have plastic template sheets which don't change size like cardboard did back in the day when they used to cut them out of cereal boxes. So I was going to show you a little bit here on the other camera about how to um, use templates and to make it easier on you. So I'm going to step over this way. So in the pattern there are uh, roof templates and that's, these are the only template pieces, just because they're kind of an odd shape. And so you have the center of your roof, and then you have your sky background, which is E and D. And so F is the other uh, piece that will go on the other side of the roof here. And so these are cut out of plastic template material. Sometimes you find it with the grid on it. Sometimes you find it without the grid. It doesn't really matter. Um, either one works because you have the pattern um, to trace um, the pattern piece, the template piece with. So if you're using, and you're going to cut these out, instead of tracing around each one and cutting them, you can take a spinning cutting mat. When you have template shapes like this, what you want to do is you want to rough cut whatever the closest regular shape um, that you can get. And so if I lay this on my board here, I know that this is going to be a two and a half by three and a half inch rectangle. And what I can do is I can cut two and a half by three and a half inch rectangles, and then I can um, put my template on a ruler and just cut the side that I need to cut off because this one, I would only need to cut one side of the rectangle off. And so I would double side stick that on here and match, make sure my edges are matched up. I would lay that on the material and I would make my cut. Uh, there are a few little edge pieces here that just help you with lining up that you might want to cut off, but I didn't even bother with that. I just dealt with the dog ears. So I do the same thing for the uh, roof template. And this one measured at, I believe, somewhere around eight inches by two and a half or something like that. And so I cut a rectangle for each roof and then I just trimmed off. I laid this on the rectangle, laid my ruler on, and then traced off, cut off the two edges that needed to be cut off. So it's just, it's not hard to work with templates. You just, it's a little bit fussier, but it's worth it to be able to get um, a certain kind of shape that maybe you haven't, that's easier to make with templates than without them. So, um, something to keep in mind when making this pattern. Um, the other thing, oops. So, we talked about the roof. Um, template and how to use template plastic. Now let's talk about the applique that I did here. In the pattern, and we have it right here, in the pattern for the vine that you see that runs 
along for the birds to sit on. They used rickrack, and they used um, a bright orange rickrack, which I guess it went with their fabrics, but it didn't really go with what my fabrics were. And I didn't have the right shade of green for what I was doing. So what I decided to do was make bias binding. And I have a ruler new in the shop that is called the um, Bias Binding Simplified Ruler. It's by Creative Grids. Uh, what it does is um, it cuts binding strips for you and that you can just sew together like you would sew normal binding strips together. Um, but the angles are already cut for you with the ruler. So they're easy to piece together and you can just create, you know, a, one long continuous piece of binding. And so it says on the ruler exactly how to fold your fabric. There's pictures and um, sentences about the different steps that you need to do. And what you do is you're basically t starting with a rectangle of fabric, okay? So it could be any rectangle. If it could be, a, a, you know, a half a yard, it could be um, a fat quarter. But how you fold it is important. So you're going to fold you're going to fold one corner up. Then you're going to fold the other corner down. And you're going to line up your ruler. And then you're going to fold some more. And how you fold it is, like I said, on the ruler. Then you line the diagonal edge down here on the bottom of this and you just could cut 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 and it cuts all the strips for you going in the right direction um, they're all uh, you know 45 degree angle here at the end to put them together and each step is on here for you it also does um, two different size bindings so I cut a two and a half inch binding for uh, this quilt I probably could have gone smaller. I didn't need to have it quite that big, but it looked good, so I'm happy with it. Um, but it also cuts strips for um, two and a quarter. So there's lines on here that the black line is for two and a half, so you would just lay this on your fabric and cut two and a half, or you can follow the dotted line and cut two and a quarter. It also says on here how much yardage you're going to get out of a piece of fabric. So for out of a half a yard, I got 270 inches of bias binding, which was a lot in which I used all but probably 12 inches of that to make the uh, vine here. And that's for four pieces of vine on the, on the quilt itself. So once I have my binding all ready to put onto the quilt, I'm going to pretty much just kind of do a nice curve um, it's not really, there's no exactness to this at all, and the more random it is, the more whimsical it looks. So, I put one on, then I put the other one on top of the other one, crisscrossing in opposite directions, um, so that the little birds have somewhere to sit. What I did is I basted this down um, so that it would stay in place. You could also just pin it in place. So what I did is I blanket stitched along both sides of the vine first. Then I added my leaves and then I added um, the birds. So I blanket stitched around all of the appliques. I fused them on. And this time I used Soft Fuse. It's a, it's a new product here in the shop. And Soft Fuse is an extra soft fusible that we have here. And it's on a really big roll. You have to ask for it. Um, we cut it off whatever size you need. But it's extremely flexible. You don't even know that there's glue on it. I like I love heat and bond too, but it's a little bit thicker, a little bit more glue. If you need something a little bit lighter, something a little bit more flexible, the soft fuse was very nice. It's a lot like um, our, our favorite Quilter Select fusible too, uh, fusible web, fusible web plus I believe it's called. They're both very similar in the softness that they have to them. So this is, again, uh, Free as a Bird is the pattern. We have them here in the shop. Um, we have all of the different fabrics um, to make up one just like this if you want to. And we have a bunch of new ones in too that I'm going to show you that would look really pretty in this quilt. So this is Free as a Bird and it's by Abby Lane. So while we're on these cute little birds here, 
I just want to let you know that if you didn't want to cut out all the different birds and you have AccuQuilt, um, AccuQuilt makes a nice little die that has three different little birds on it um, that would make this very easy to do. So if you have AccuQuilt, keep that in mind. This is the, um, what do they call this one? I guess it doesn't have any. It's for the birds. They also have a little single one with a little tiny bird on it too. So that would be also very cute on the vines. When I go to quilt this quilt, I'm thinking that I'm going to do a lot more quilting in the white background behind the birds, maybe add in leaves, maybe even possibly do some pebbling that look like grapes. In, so it kind of looks like a grapevine a little bit. So there's lots of different options for quilting on this one too. So not all birds live in, in uh, birdhouses. Some of them live on the farm. And we recently got in this uh, line called Farmhouse Chic. And it is um, a really cute kind of country farmhouse inspired uh, line. It has some reds, some taupes, it has the creams in it, and it has the farm animals. And so it has our chickens or our birds on here. And so this is the placemat set that you can um, get um, on running yardage here at the shop. And it makes four placemats. They have some cows, some goats, some chickens on it. And it's all farm to table, general store, you know, all the cute uh, country things. There's some great um, fabrics that go along with it, like this pretty little rose that I use for the back of the placemats. There's cute ginghams. And there's some barn wood. So I have a cream barn wood, a, a red barn wood to kind of go with these. And then they have one that looks like a patchwork quilt um, that's running yardage that's really nice too. Any of those would look great on the back of these, but I chose to put the cute little roses on this one. And so when I went and I decided to quilt these, what I did was I went and decided to do a diagonal grid and I used this tool, which some of you have in your um, stash or in your notions box. This is called a Hera marker. And you might have it, you might not know what it does, but what it does is it creates creases in, on your fabric. It marks where you need to sew. Um, so you can follow a line without using any kind of chalk marker or anything on the quilt itself. So what I did is I decided that I was going to just have my line go diagonally across the rectangle here. And when I did that, I got this really nice um, kind of diamond pattern that showed up on here. And I, of course, I used my walking foot because that's going to give you the best looking stitches for when you do a grid. So any kind of straight stitching, walking foot is key. And so here's a close up so you can see the stitching on there. And again, this is farmhouse chic, and the little chickens are just cute as can be. While we're on the subject of chickens, I have a pattern in the shop. It's called chooks. Now, I'm not quite sure what chooks means. Um, I don't know if it's a type of chicken or if it is some kind of term because this de pattern designer is from Australia. So I'm not really sure what it means, but the pattern is called Chooks. It's by um, Claire, Claire Turpin's um, design company. And they are part of the Creative Abundance pattern company out of Australia. So it's really kind of comical looking chickens. Um, I'll show you the two of them. These are to make pillows with um, for your farmhouse. And so this is the rooster, and this is the chicken. I think they're both super cute. They're kind of goofy looking. Um, I have um, some blanket stitching to do around the edges of um, all the appliques. And again, I used a nice soft, uh, soft fuse to fuse these down so it's very pliable um, applique. 
And of course, when I go to do my applique, I always want to put some kind of stabilizer on the back side when I do my stitches. Your stitches are just going to lay nicer. So my favorite stabilizer to use is a tearaway stabilizer we have here on the bolt. And it's called Stiffy. And it's great stuff. It tears away easily. And um, it, it gives nice body to your piece so that your stitches will lay flat. And so the pattern we have here is called Chooks, and it's by Creative Abundance. A couple more AccuQuilt dies in the, in the bird family here. We have um, the owl die, and we also have the eagle die. So they would both be cute on either a baby quilt or a Cult of Valor quilt. Um, this with some red, white, and blue would be stunning. So a um, couple of different dies to keep in, keep in mind for when you want to work with a bird theme. My next project I've been wanting to put together for a while. So far, I just have it all fused down, but it is called... Blooms of Inspiration. It's by Ryan McKenna. Um, she is a fabric designer and um, the pattern has um, three different sayings on them and all the patterns show all three on it but then you have to choose the one that's marked home, love, or hope. And I chose the one that's home because that's our theme today, home tweet home. And of course it has some birds on it. This is going to be a nice um, door hanging or maybe you have a skinny wall in your house to hang this one. It's very popular to have these little wooden signs outside your door that say welcome on them these days. So why not have a little quilt instead? What I did was um, in the pattern they give you the templates for the lettering and they also give you templates to make the flowers themselves and to make the birds themselves. And instead of doing that, I chose to use um, a fabric line that we have here at the shop that has giant white peonies in it, um, flowers. And then I also chose to use um, a fabric that we have here in the shop in the fall section that has all these different little birds on them and, and nice pretty fall colors. So it was very easy to put this one together because it's basically fusible and then you cut out a bunch of flowers that are fusible and these have the um, fusible on them and you can see how much they drape. So it's a really nice light fusible. It's called soft fuse and I really like it here. So give this one a try. It's a, I think this would be a really nice shower gift or even throw it in as a wedding gift or a home war housewarming present for somebody that maybe has gotten a new home. Like again, again um, the patterns, you can get one that says home, you can get one that says love, or you can get one that says hope, or you can buy all three. Um, it's it's a, a very cute pattern, very easy to put together. And of course, when you're cutting out the detail of the appliques, all these birds and flowers and everything. The best pair of scissors are the Perfect Scissors by Karen K. Buckley and the blue size is my absolute favorite. Um, they have a serrated edge to them. They have a great point on them to get into the little areas that you need to clip into. They also come in a, it also comes in a larger size and it comes in a smaller size too. So um, keep those in mind if you got some um, detailed cutting that you need to do or they're just great scissors all the way around. So the next quilt I have to share with you is House Hunters. And um, it's a cute little wall hanging and it has cardinals on it. And I know how much a lot of you love cardinals. They have special meaning to you. And um, I know you're always looking for them at Christmas time to put into your quilts. Um, this one is a very cute winter scene. It is um, a birdhouse. Um, connected to a birch tree in the background there and then it has a female and a male cardinal um, on the quilt itself so or on the birdhouse so 
Um, this one was very easy to put together. Again, it was fused. I got this one finished um, in no time. It was a little bit of free motion quilting and it was done. You can kind of see my free motion on the back side. Uh, you can see some of the white threads. Um, it looks kind of cool on that side too. But I basically just used a straight stitch. I didn't do any blanket stitch or anything because the pieces are too small for that. Um, when you do a very detailed like art kind of wall hanging like this, it's better to just use smaller tinier straight stitches with your free motion foot. Again, this one is called House Hunters, and I'm going to have kits for this one. So um, if you want a kit for it, um, let me know. Um, it should be fairly inexpensive, and the pattern is great with it too. So um, the pattern will be included. So you might want to give this one a try. It's House Hunters. And while we're talking about cardinals, um, AccuQuilt also makes a cardinal die. So this would look great on one of your Christmas quilts too. Um, so keep that one in mind too. So one last thing as far as birds go, the home sweet home theme, before I show you some show and tell, um, Darla has some flying geese in her latest quilt. This is called Oceanic. And you can see it has wonderful colors in it. And of course she made it with AccuQuilt. And this is going to be uh, a class here at the shop. It'll be on June 10th and June 22nd. Um, it's, one, it's a one-time class. And if you have AccuQuilt, we'd love for you to join us. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you instructions for all the cutting at home so you don't have to carry the AccuQuilt cutting system with you. You can just have her all the pieces cut and you bring them in and she's going to teach you how to sew together the block. It's a beautiful quilt and they look like little fishes swimming in the ocean. And this is called Oceanic and you can look for that on the class calendar. Alright, now it's time for show and tell. I have a couple of things that I've finished since the last time we were together. Uh, the first one is from my collage class. I know a lot of you have been asking about this one and then also, um, you know, following me along each month as I work a little bit more and more on this. Um, I finally finished it up. I did some um, thread painting on it. I did um, free motion quilting. I did tiny little loopies on the background. And uh, it's all bound and finished and ready for you to see here at the shop. Uh, there is a collage class on the calendar this month. I can't remember the date, but you can check out our calendar on our website and it's the collage class. The second finish that I got done quilting, this one is called a Garden Party. You saw this when I did the flower episode um, a couple months ago. So um, this one was applique, it was fused on, and I decided to do blanket stitch around all the applique, and I did pebbling, hopefully you can see that. If not, come in the shop and take a look at it close up. I did pebbling in the backgrounds and just a little bit of quilting in the flowers. I just wanted the flowers to really pop. So I, I left those not quilted as much. If you want your appliques to pop, don't quilt them as much. And really heavily quilt your background. So those are two quilts that I got done. So that's my show and tell. And then I wanted to announce that I have a couple of new fabric lines that just came in. This one just came in the door yesterday. This is Cottage Blue by Robin Pickens for Moda. And I have 13 different pieces of the collection. I don't have the entire collection, but it's all a hydrangea collection and it has a lot of great little prints with it. There are some cute little floral prints that go with it, great colors, blues, um, these chartreuse colors, really fabulous together. And the blue hydrangea comes with lots of different background colors. So if you don't want a white background, I've got navy blue background. I've got um, kind of a cool green background. I have a chartreuse background with the bright, flat, with the bright blue flowers on top of it. And then Robin 
Pickens is also the person that um, has designed our, one of our favorite um, tone on tones here at the shop. It's called Thatched. And she has, I have the two, I have two of the new colors that um, come with the collection too. This cornflower, cornflower blue, and then another like soft um, minty green color too that looks really pretty with the collection. And so I think that's all I have for you this week. Um, be sure to check out our calendar. I did add some more classes today. And um, thank you for all the feedback on the new quilt shop that we're um, redoing inside. It's uh, coming along. There's even more to see today, but that'll have to wait till the next newsletter. Um, I'm glad everyone's ex as, ex as excited as we are about the new shop. And of course that will hopefully will move in September. And what else? I think there's nothing else for today, but thank you for joining me. Um, it was short but tweet and uh, We'll see you next time here at Sweet Stitches. Have a good day.